Hi, everybody. It's still June 28, 2021. Okay, anybody, if you have any information on what's happening in Georgia right now, um, please leave a comment below. I did get a comment from a subscriber who lives in Detroit area, and they said we're having thunderstorms. In fact, I got a comment from another person in this area, and they said flooding, flooding was taking place on streets in Detroit. And fortunately, they were able to find other roads, got home. This is Detroit area. Little blips of thunderstorms. Manufactured, man-made. Look how beautifully lined, defined is this line of precipitation. So, yeah, do you see the frequencies taking place in our tropical storm? Do you see? Let me zoom right on in. Not much happening on the west. Boy, is it hot. Okay. Hope you do see them right there. Smashing into All right, um, let's just check out College of DuPage, Mexico, Mexico. Wow, wow, okay. Evaporation of an awful lot of the vapor in this uh, fabulous blob of a, what they call a tropical storm. Really? Guys, I'll be honest with you. I'm having a hard time with what we're living. And why isn't this working? Let's see. It just, it, okay. Thank you. Good. So, Maybe they intended it for South Carolina, which was the cone of right smack into South Carolina. And well, somebody is not steering it uh, the way it should, the direction it should be going in. And they decided, oh my God, we don't want to hit Georgia again. Who the hell knows? Who knows? But let's check the radar. Wow. All right. Oh, yeah. Nice high frequencies, sawtooth frequency. Uh, extremely low frequencies, the straight edged, circular is high frequencies. Um, well, let me just show you that 102 degrees, it is, well, let me, I get, oh, it dropped to degrees. That's why I feel so much cooler and better. No. Uh, 106 tomorrow. 105, 103. All righty. Well, excessive heat warning. How are you guys doing? You Western folk. How are you doing? Because this is brutal. And, you know, I'm up on a mountain, Montana, was not expecting this. You know, the cabin has been so cool, you know, inside up until two days ago. And now it's like I'm sitting in an oven. I, I can't believe these temperatures. Okay. Let's just say normal life feels like a horror movie. Oh, 
Well, the Daily Beast journalist actually, uh, well, that could be interpreted as, you know, life uh, is now just a horror movie. Oh, no. What he meant, this journalist, was normal life. Normal life. Um, Kids not wearing masks in malls. Terror. It's a this grown man is terrified. I feel America has forgotten we're still in the middle of a pandemic that has killed more than 600,000 people and there's a deadly Delta Plus strain and our kids are still not vaccinated. Sigh. I see packed restaurants, people inside stores, malls, their kids aren't wearing masks. I feel like I'm in a horror movie. Stay home, stay home. That's, that's the answer. You stay home. You have kids, you keep them home. You're so terrified, you stay home. I am so sick of what life has turned into. You know, so there are people who, who go along with this crap and frankly understand this. There are, I, and I'm throwing out this number, but this is based on my research over 100,000 social media operatives, operatives on all social media platforms, leaving comments like this. Fully vaccinated and my only concession is I don't wear gloves to shop anymore. (laughs) Haven't seen my daughter for two years. Mask up, folks. People are taking terrible risks, exposing their unvaccinated kids with the Delta variant out there. All right, don't want to read anymore. But yeah, you have a sickness that no vaccine can prevent. Matt Walsh, in response to uh, Wajahat Ali, who just, he's in a horror movie. I'm the sickest I've been in over five years. Took a test, not COVID. People got sick before COVID. People even died before COVID, believe it or not. Lift some weights, do cardio, pray, and have faith and love and light. Yeah, thank God. Engaged with the right-wing media ecosystem and their trolls today for the first time in a while. And they really do live on Earth 3. Not sure what that is, but fine. The conspiracy theories, talking points, aggressive attacks on science, anti-vax propaganda, casual bigotry, and xenophobia. Whoa, man, these right-wing individuals are, I guess, multitasking that, wow, it's a wild place. I don't want life to be like this. I don't want life to be like this. I so don't want this to be happening, and it's happening across the board, but the corruption in our schools, in in local government, state government, federal government, all over the friggin' place, mainstream media. Virginia PTA moves to eliminate school's parent group after anti-critical race theory candidates elected. This is Fairfax County, you know, the (laughs) Virginia, the top high school in the country, which is um, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. The Parent Teacher Association of Virginia sent a letter of intent to abolish the parent group of the nation's uh, of you know, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology uh, after a slate of candidates who opposed critical race theory won an election earlier this month. They won those who opposed critical race theory and this parent teacher association wants to disband them. Wow. Okay. I've said it before, I'll say it again. When very 
messed up people, control freaks. They have an agenda. They don't let go. Any means necessary to get them to their end. Evil people have no qualms whatsoever. They don't have a conscience. So they'll do whatever is necessary to win, to get their agenda done. I don't like these people. It really upsets me. You know, okay. And how this is also um, the Loudoun County, Fairfax County area of Virginia. And I've posted a number of videos, you know, showing the, uh, the school board. I also posted a video on how those behind the curtain operate. And they're recent videos, so if you've not seen them and you want to check them out, go to my channel page. But um, my homepage. But to read this now, you know, you fight and you fight and you fight and you fight. That's all we do now in this country. All we do is fight. We fight with one another, you know, left versus right. Everything is a fight. Every friggin' thing in life is a fight. And, you know, Americans really need to take a good look in the mirror and figure out what the hell they're doing and stop this insane, immature behavior. Uh, you know, it, because it's, it's, yeah, the crescendo is coming. That's, can't believe this. It's so sad because I know how hard, you know, those residents of Virginia, the parents who are opposed to critical race theory, as well as the entrance exam, uh, they've abolished it. Now, okay, let me get back to this, I'm sorry. So, they, uh, Parent Teachers Student Association, of Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology claims that the recent elected candidates skirted bylaws and created a hostile environment for members. This is another thing that really upsets me. The, the blaming people for what the person who's doing the blaming is doing. The hostility is coming from the school boards. Hostility is coming from the left who want critical race theory. You know, it's like... They... Their... The hatefulness in them has come out to such a degree that it's really hard to keep digging into this and see what's going on. But they claim to be the loving, tolerant side when they're so, it's not even an intolerance. It's a vicious hostility. hostility. And I've posted the videos showing how the school board went off after the parent group and Last fall, after district officials abolished its entrance exam in an attempt to boost black and Hispanic enrollment. Oh, you abolish an entrance exam for the top high school in the country, science and technology, abolish it because you can't raise children up, you've got to bring everybody down. And that's exactly what's going on. The Parent Teacher Association would circumvent the results of the referendum 
on Fairfax County Public Schools if it decided to move forward with eliminating Thomas Jefferson's parent board. Candidates opposed to uh, the, their, this high school's recent equity measures, such as the updated admissions process, those opposed to the abolition of the entrance exam won a majority on the association board. Now, adults who are very screwed up are working to reverse that. Harry Jackson, who was voted president-elect in the most recent election, called the Virginia PTA's move dictatorial. Yeah, we live in a totalitarian society. Get it? It's obvious now. This is what he said. This is how they welcome this new diverse class by taking away their support. Jackson, who will be the first black man to serve as president-elect. <laughs> Do you think it's about, oh, race? Really? Okay. They want to get rid of the first black man to serve as president-elect. That, I, I don't know, it sounds racist to me. Oh, right, it has nothing to do with race. Nothing, nothing at all. The new admissions process, listen to this. <clears throat> Asian students fell 16% for the incoming class, and the number of white students increased by 43% as a result of the change. So they hurt a minority class of students, and they, well, uh, increased that white power. And the black and Hispanic kids, well, it seems that only the white students uh, benefited from this new admissions policy. A June email to, the, to those parents, check, check your privileges, check your privileges. Jackson said, that move limited the opportunity of many children in the district based on their ethnicity. Lots of gifted Asian students did not get in because, well, the, um, the school board limited the opportunity for the Asian kids. I find it wrong to limit a child's opportunity based on ethnicity. Isn't it wrong? Of course it's wrong. The letter, the, the, uh, the Parent Teachers Association sent a letter of intent to abolish the parent group. Okay, so the letter is a clear attempt to hijack parents' power at the nation's top high school during an ongoing debate over merit-based admissions. Ashra Nomani, who I, I'm, I have a lot of respect for that woman, uh, has been fighting this, and um, and she's also a parent of a 2021 graduate, Thomas Jefferson, uh, and vice president for Parents Defending Education. She said, the actions by the Virginia PTA are an aggressive abuse of power to control the mostly immigrant, mostly minority parents at America's number one high school and hijack the school while it sits in the middle of a national debate over how we protect merit in America. It's a clarion call on how important it is for parents to stand up and be engaged in schools because you know what? You send your kids off to school regardless of color and you want the best for them, right? Okay, well, school boards, administrators, superintendents, are not doing the best for any of them because they're pulling everybody down instead of working to raise them up. So, 
Asian American students were the biggest percentage that got into Thomas Jefferson High School of Science and Technology. Why? Because Asian Americans consider education really important. They work hard. It's like um, Jewish Americans or Jews all over, whatever, but Asians all over. Education's really important. Parents focus on education for their kids. They work hard. They get good grades. They deserve their accomplishments for their good grades. This school board is taking that away from them. This whole community that are so pro uh, critical race theory, getting equity means bringing everybody down. Equity means, hey, well, um, most kids can't, you know, get into this high school. So what are we going to do? We're going to take away AP classes and we're taking away the entrance exams. How could that be at all fair. Ashra Nomani. Um, uh, born in Mumbai, India, came to this country. You know, she was a former Wall Street Journal correspondent, written for the New York Times, Washington Post, Slate, American Prospect Time, correspondent for Salon.com. At one point, you know, that was <laughs> actually a worthy list, but unfortunately today it's not anymore. But um, I can't stand... I can't stand watching people who have really worked hard get so destroyed by other people. It's sickening. I literally have a visceral response to everything that's taking place. You know, those who are upset that Asian Americans, you know, uh, are the predominant percentage of, you know, students in schools, certainly science and technology, they deserve it. So perhaps parents who have kids in school who are not really focusing on education with your kids, start. Start. How about using those Asian Americans as a power of example? Wow, man, maybe, maybe if I work hard, I too can accomplish. They should be, you know, applauded for their efforts, respected for their accomplishments, and instead of just dragging them down, So we, you know, we should be following their example. I was listening to this. This is on Ashra Nomani's channel, and I can't listen to it. You know, just listening to what these people are saying who are so pro, you know, critical race theory, equity, and and. I was listening to this woman. I don't believe her. I believe that she's lying through her teeth. And um, look, students at TJ are suffering. Alumni have told us heart-wrenching stories of what they've gone through. We have letters from classes of graduates with hundreds of signatures saying that diversity needs to be addressed. Um, so I, I just think that no matter what we do, there won't be a perfect solution. But the other saying that keeps rolling around in my head is 
the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expecting different outcomes. I thought the slide showing all the steps that have been taken to marginally increase access is really telling. And I you know what's really telling? That if these teachers and, you know, all the people who are involved with the young in public schools, private schools, if you haven't been creating an environment that has been safe and welcoming for all, you now have to implement this policy to do it, yeah, it ain't going to happen. Because the adults have to do the work on themselves to create that environment. She got hundreds of letters from alumni that, you know, these minority students aren't feeling welcomed. And then she actually says, doing the same thing over and over again, is the definition of insanity or expecting different results. And expect so what, what are you going to do? Bring all of them down and don't even teach science and math and you know English or anything. Just focus on race. What the hell are we doing, man? What the hell? And then she says, you know, that she heard from this student who bleached her skin because she wanted to be white. Well, I will say this. Something's wrong with her parents and something's wrong with the adults. And you know, look, I'm sorry. I have a hard time believing all of this when there are so many that have been found out to be lying, hoaxes, and, um, but, you know, uh, you got to look at yourself if you have provided this kind of environment in school. And in 2020, 2021, I'm sorry. You know, I don't believe that that environment exists. You know, again, South Carolina, watching all of these kids who obviously were friends with one another, all different, you know, Hispanic, black, white, they didn't give a shit about the color of their skin. Lying is evil. It's just evil. You know, oh God. You know, I want you to listen to this. A student in a public school, Indianapolis. Listen to what she has to say. I have been in counseling as long as I can remember because I was adopted from foster care at age four. The things I've learned along the way are being challenged now when my science and math teacher is trying to teach me how to be emotionally. And why are they teaching me about... Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to work on the volume because that's... I need to get this a little bit higher because I want you to hear her. Um, this broke my heart. All right, this is the best that I can do. So I really hope that you can hear what she has to say. I have been in counseling as long as I can remember because I was adopted from foster care at age four. The things I've learned along the way are being challenged now when my science and math teacher is trying to teach me how to be emotionally and why are they teaching me about sexuality and how to identify i don't want to hear about sexuality during class in front of other students because that should be a private thing this should be left in the homes in between students and counselors or one-on-one -on -one conversations this has been a very traumatic part of my past and the more the school focuses on sexuality, the more it affects me and my anxiety. It leaves confusion and frustration in my mind, and I don't know how to deal with that because they only focus on more content I feel hurt about. For example, I was told I have white privilege. How can a child born in an abusive drug and alcohol abuse home who lost her entire biological family that has experienced all forms of abuse and neglect be privileged? If you found a child at 15 months in a home with 
holes in the floor eating cat poop, would you consider them privileged? Just asking because when I was told that I was told that I was so upset, I cried myself to sleep. We have to stop the stereotypes and bitterness towards groups because it gets us nowhere but divided. I have no friends and can say HSC again has failed me. They are trying to divide us into two groups instead of bringing us together as one. Every day I felt less and less valued as a student and failed every class this past year. Academics are Demics are not important in here, only how we feel and making sure we learn about sexuality, political topics, and emotional topics that teachers may or may not be able to handle, especially with trauma children like myself. I'm happy to move on and begin a fresh start and hope that this next school will love me for me and challenge me to grow in areas that I'm good at. I just want people to love one another and the way we are doing it is wrong. Thank you for your time. When you think of the ripple effects of CRT, all of the incredibly explicit um, sex in the books that they now, but I guess they consider it literature. I have the, cha the, the video on my channel, Loudoun County Parents Reading from the Books, that they're, <laughs> oh, well, they claim is um, English honors or honors English, so sexually explicit that my even listening to it, you know, it, it kind of like, okay, well, that's what is going on. So you have students in these public schools or private schools, wherever, who have been sexually abused and they have to sit and listen to that crap. You have an awful lot of these white kids coming from environments that they suffered trauma. This is such child abuse, I can't believe it. Now we understand what's going on. We understand that there are these satanic, communist, crazy people who want the world the way they want it and because they are evil they stop at nothing but a whole lot of people don't understand this a whole lot of people don't understand the big picture of all of the agendas that are taking place even if this one agenda was the only thing that we were facing how adults could possibly, how they could possibly support this going on in schools. It is such a disgrace. It's embarrassing to be an American. But boy, talk about the dumbing down. It has been pretty intense, clearly. This girl has a lot of courage. Okay. Yeah. I get upset. You don't mess with children. You just don't mess with children. Now we have so many adults who honestly don't give a shit about the children at all. And that's heartbreaking. Don't tell me to go on vacation to relax. Perhaps you should look at yourself to understand why it is that you're not upset about what's going on. <laughs>